Well, welcome to part three. Quick recap, we've built the CMM2 Red. We started building a Fairlight inspired workstation for it, complete with a light box powered by the Commodore 64. We got a bit famous on the telly. It's not just plinky plonky, you made That's a really fine. good tune. And we started fixing or unshattering this case. We're also still completely lacking our VDU and our eight inch floppy disks. <clears throat> Well, now we gotta get back on the case and finish it up. That's enough filler. Welcome to Retro Recipes. Well, finally it was time to attempt the vinyl wrap, I mean spinal tap. I say attempt, I'm a perfectionist. I'm not perfect, but if there is even one air bubble, it's got to go. Problem with this is it started to rip the uh, lines at the top of the Commodore 64 case there. And then trying to get it around the curves of the diagonal slant on the sides and the corners, even with its shrink to fit properties, was just near impossible. Now, I could definitely have done it if I had an hour long video to share with you. And I think just for something of this complexity, vinyl wrap isn't the right choice after all. But I know what is. Beautiful. That's better. Put that on eBay. Cheap that. All right, so I've got the primer. Now, as you know, we did the original keyboard in glossy black, but this I'm gonna prime and then do it in matte black. It's gonna be a really nice contrast. Now, I originally came up with the idea of the vinyl wrap when I thought I was going to be using my very good condition case from my refurbished this video. Uh, I would never normally do a permanent spray paint on a great condition case. However, seeing as this one was trash anyway, I'm gonna make that exception, because whatever we do to it is way better than how it arrived. Don't know you guys, I might just have to leave them like this. Frustratingly, the more I worked on repairing the other parts, cracks would actually start to form in the rest of the case. This case is so thick and brittle, it's, it's kind of unbelievable. So I super glued that, and then I just sanded down to make that smooth. Same thing on the back of the top case here, super glued and sanded. So I've just done a little bit more sanding on this after I've sprayed the primer, because the primer kind of acts like a, another coat of filler. Anything below this line, we're gonna see when the other top part of the case goes on top. So I've really tried to get the definition of that line in there, and you'll see when I put the top case on how that helps. It's a little bit confusing because some of the uh, case color is showing through, but that curve that we had to completely rebuild I think it's looking more than good enough. And this one as well. Once we paint this black, I think we're gonna be good to go. Let's go do that. And I've actually gone for a satin black this time. I love the satin look of that vinyl wrap. So we'll try and get the same effect. I think what's on today's menu and retro recipes is looking pretty healthy. But let's take a look at the repaired one. Not too shabby, if I do say so myself. We've really gone from junk to gem. The most satisfying part of any restoration 
putting the new rubber feet on. I'm so pleased with how this all came out. It's not going to look just right until we put the lovely new lid on. I say new, it's very old. Oh yeah, we have this interesting two-tone effect. I don't know about you, but I like that. The sticky from this is definitely perished, so we're gonna apply some new sticky on there. just isn't meant to stay on there, huh? I'm not gonna give up. I'm gonna keep gluing this thing back together until it relents. Now in the very next episode, we're gonna do a dedicated special refurbishing this completely. We're gonna recap the board. We're gonna remove this unnecessary RF shield. We're gonna spray these metals, add some heat sinks. But most importantly, when I bought this on eBay, it was not working. So I'm gonna fix it. For so now, just to make sure everything's looking good, I'm gonna pop it in here, pop this back on, put the keyboard in, and reinstate that LED. looking everywhere for the black ring. It's still on here. <laughs> Whoa. That looks good. So this is the abandoned TV that I'm going to use, um, but I don't want it to just look like a TV sitting on top of the CMM station. What I want to do is paint the base of the TV red to match that, and the red guitar, of course. Let's get rid of this stand. I'm taking a stand. Oh, oh. Now, while I was looking at the back label here, I realize this is kind of retro. It was made in October 2008. The reason I like this TV for this project is not only its rescue, but on the back there is the S video connection. This is going to give us the best possible video quality from the Commodore 64. Well, let's get this cleaned up and sand it. Up, up.
Okay, well while we leave this in here to dry, I'm going to get started cleaning up the TV itself. Now you've seen here the Chromecast. This is an old one I had lying around, but I'm using it to name this TV as the workstation and display the name of that on the screen, along with some glamour shots of the CMM2 Red. Now I didn't have a remote for this, so I just bought a $7 Universal RCA remote. Of course now it's got dog hairs all over it. Well, 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 look what arrived in the post. These are going to let me put the finishing touch to this monitor. Okay. <laughs> uh, these are what I wanted. Yeah. Oh, I know what I'll do with those. But these, ooh, tasty. funny you know I realize this is hugely cheating and kind of naughty let me be really clear this is nothing but an homage a tribute to Commodore and it's better than that we've had black and silver now let's try black and silver okay that'll do. Hmm. that's more subtle right you can always change it but for now I'm gonna go with the more subtle version it's far more appealing. <laughs> All trace of Sanyu erased from history. But you know, the way things are going in 20 years, we'll be making Sanyu retro videos. Hmm. I wonder how it looks with this on. That's all I wanted. So all that remains is to take this over to the CMM station itself and do some of those lovely glamour shots. He re-sprayed it into this really lovely red coat. Like, a, like a, an 80s, 80s chord. He actually he wrote a tune wrote on it. It's a really good tune. It's not it's just Blinky Blonky. Blinky Blonky. Blinky Blonky. Blinky Blonky. Blinky Blonky. definitely the inviting music workspace that I wanted. The plan now for part 4 and the refurb or repair of the mainboard is to do it live. I don't know if it's going to work, but if you see a link above and in the description, it'll tell you the scheduled time for the live repair and slash or refurb. Fingers crossed, until then, cheerio for now. Thank you, thank you.